over here I have this channel strip of all of these processors, so it's quite a bit. So let's go ahead and go through one by one. We're going to start with the noise gate. Okay, now the noise gate, the function of that uh, for vocals in a song is to cut out all of that ambient and room noise um, that is also going through all the processors, or would go if we did not have the noise gate on. So basically, we don't want any room sound or ambient noise taking up space in the mix. Now you would think that it wouldn't be that big of a deal because room noise is pretty soft when you don't have any processors happening. So let's listen to the room noise without anything else going on. It's very soft. You can hardly notice it. However, if you end up doing a lot of compression and other processing, now let's listen to the same segment of room noise. You can actually hear some of that modulation uh, kind of fluttering the room noise, and that can be very distracting and also can end up taking at least a little bit of space uh, from the mix when it's not very necessary to do so. So we want to bring the noise gate in to basically act as a minimum volume or like a volume floor. Okay, we want to say that below a certain volume, we want to just cut out all of that signal. So it kind of acts as a compressor. You know, a compressor has a threshold uh, where you say, above this certain volume, let's dampen the signal. The noise gate says, below this certain volume, just cut it all out. Okay, so uh, I just have the noise gate open here. And here it is, as I was just explaining, the threshold. Uh, this is going to be our noise floor. So let's go ahead and play this um, room sound on loop. This is the first step. And then kind of gradually bring this noise floor up to the point where it's just cutting out that room noise. Okay, so around negative 40, you start to notice that the room noise goes away, except for some minor like mouth sounds and stuff, preparing to sing the next line, things like that. So what you can do in that case, you can bring it up a little bit more. The reason we don't want to go overboard with that is we don't want to start cutting into the actual singing, because sometimes you sing a bit softer and you don't want those soft uh, syllables to get cut out. So at negative 38, I'm not even hearing that mouth noise preparing for the next part in the vocals. So now that you have your threshold set, you want your reduction set at negative 100, so that's cutting everything out, okay? It's not just reducing by a little, it's cutting everything out just how we want it. And so now with that set, we want to check and see how it's affecting, if at all, the actual singing in the song. So now we're going to solo out this singing section, because we have the room noise taken care of, and let's hear how that sounds. You try to escape your fate, then wade into the woods. Right? So let's play it one more time. Listen to how quickly it goes to zero after each line. You try to escape your fate, then wade into the woods. All right, so some of those ends of the lines. Uh, you kind of are expecting a final consonant sound, and you're not quite hearing it because the noise gate went ahead and cut everything out before that small sound could be made. And that's where the next part of the noise gate comes in. The attack, hold, and release. Okay, now the attack, same as the compressor, it's kind of that millisecond amount of time before the processor takes effect. Okay, so if you had a high attack, that would mean it would take a little bit before we started opening up the gate. Okay, so let's kind of hear the difference there. We're going to solo this out and bring up the attack time. You try to escape your fate, then wade into the woods. You try to escape. So it's a little more smooth, in my opinion, when you're opening up that gate. Uh, into the beginning of the line. So we're specifically listening to the beginning. Let's go ahead and set it around 50 milliseconds. That's a pretty smooth 
um, attack, probably specifically for something like vocals, where you want it to be uh, not too immediate cut uh, for the open and close. You try to escape your fate then wade into the woods. All right, now the hold and release, that's what's going to affect the second part of the vocal line, the end of it. We want to first mess with the release. That's what's going to kind of linger the gate at the end of the vocal line. So let's raise that up and see if we can get some of those subtle consonant sounds at the end of the line. You try to escape your fate then wade into the woods. You try to escape your fate then wade into the woods. You try to escape your fate then wade into the woods. So now I'm hearing a bit more of those consonant sounds. I probably don't want to rely solely on the release. This is more of like a fade out effect of the gate. And I actually want it to be held with this hold setting here uh, until that consonant sound has been recorded. So let's bring that up to about 100. We'll bring it up gradually until we're starting to get a smooth consonant sound on the end of these lines. You try to escape your fate then wade into the woods. You try to escape your fate then wade into the woods. You try to escape, your fate then wade into the woods. You try to escape, your fate then wade into the woods. You try to escape, your fate then wade into the woods. So now I'm going to bring the hold out a little bit further and then release it more quickly because I do want it to hold to the end of that line but I don't want it to fade out too slowly so that that ambient noise has a chance to kind of get processed on its own. You try to escape your fate then wade into the woods. You try to escape your fate then wade into the woods. You try to escape your fate then wade into the woods. You try to escape, your fate then wade into the woods. That sounds pretty good to me. So now what we want to do is we want to look at the look ahead here. And that kind of tells you if it's looking ahead for a certain signal above a certain decibel point. So above the threshold we set. And it's going to give it some time to kind of think like if it wants to open up a little earlier. You try to escape, your fate then wade into the woods. And I thought that even with the 10 millisecond look ahead that we had set by default, that it was, uh, with the attack time we had, plenty of time to catch the beginning of those lines. So I think with this final playthrough, we have set the noise gate to an appropriate level. You try to escape, your fate then wade into the woods. You try Especially because the end part here, after the last line, we're going to get rid of all of that no, uh, non-existent audio signal. Into the woods. And then you don't have to worry about going in, cutting everything between each line, and then trimming it, because that takes quite a while if you've ever done it manually before. Which sometimes it's uh, helpful to do that but I feel like you should try with the noise gate the best you can before you have to go in uh, on a case-by-case -case basis and then trim up that audio. So that is the noise gate. Now we're gonna move on to the pitch correction.